beginning, the MDG's criticism was that they were a prescription by a few experts at the UN. Um, now it's 193 member states fully engaged and at a level that we have to give them credit because these are not people who are sector experts. Uh, they, they negotiate and they cross T's and they dot I's and they have some expertise that comes in on specific issues. But for a development agenda like this that is so diverse, um, I think that they, they really um, hats off to them so far. But they would never have got this far if really um, all the work that we have seen come in from the outreach that filters in to a really um, robust mechanism of our um, uh, technical support team um, in the UN to really help inform these discussions. And so work that you've uh, given us and that we've had, whether it's in the thematic group, um, your reinforcement of the different platforms that you engage with in different constituencies, um, I can say I feel comfortable that they're heard. Um, I'll come to a point where what happens after hearing um, and how far this goes. And, and so I know uh, Nikhil Seth is in the room here, who's a colleague of ours who doesn't, hasn't slept for the last two years, and not for the next year, as we try to get this uh, going, um, and has led that process of, of, of synthesizing um, all this stuff that comes through. This space is really important. I'll try to talk less and hear more because for once it, it's an opportunity not to have to go through every one of the documents you give us that are pretty heavy and to say and then pick out of it what is a priority is to really hear what comes out of the discussions that we have and where your concerns are from seeing a lot of what um, uh, you would have had reported either from the processes in the UN uh, or perhaps from some of the things maybe the SG or some of my colleagues have said um, today. Uh, two really important processes, the Open Working Group, it will conclude with a set of goals in the next two to three months um, and present those to the General Assembly. Um, there's also a financing um, component of this experts group that will also bring up that framework um, for hoping to, to reach the ambition of what we have on the Sustainable Development Agenda. There is um, something that's not much talked about, but it's certainly a remit from Rio, which was for us to have uh, four workshops on technologies and where the role of that really happens to engage with this um, and that is still an ongoing piece of work uh, that we're doing at, at the United Nations. Um, the, the narrative sets the pace for us um, in terms of how successful are we going to be. I'm pretty sure that we're going to come out with a set of goals in September 2015. What I'm not sure about is whether we're going to get the ambition to respond to the, the kind of challenges and the complexity of what we just hear on one aspect of the development agenda, um, migration. And it is a big move. Um, we've said that we've got a universal agenda, it's no longer talking north-south, that we talk about all of us, south-south, north-south, south-north, as we've seen in many of the discussions here today. But that we move from poverty-specific to saying that we're going to achieve the eradication of poverty over 15 years through the conceptual framework of sustainable development, looking at those three dimensions. And, um, you know, William showed you, uh, as they apply to migration, the social, the economic, and the environmental aspects, and, and I think paints a pretty good picture of how migration fits into that. This is much bigger, I think, than people have imagined, that we actually are going to um, uh, move, have that transition. We have to finish off the MDGs. I think what is clear is that the existing challenges we have on the development agenda will continue. Maternal mortality is not done with, poverty is not done with, uh, child mortality is not done with, access to sanitation and portable water. These are all things that exist. Um, achieving gender equality is certainly not done with. But there are new emerging challenges that we, we didn't necessarily think about, nor did we have in 2000. Often people say the MDGs have not responded to X, Y, and Z, or well, they, they weren't there at that time. And I think that some of those emerging challenges, clearly the inequalities issue, that countries have grown so fast in some cases, but they've gone without the people. Our middle-income countries, housing, the majority of the poor, but clearly um, have left many, many behind. Um, that we have such a big issue with the demographics of our youth bulge, and no jobs, no livelihoods, and, and there the frustrations you see, um, and how our world becomes so much more insecure when you've got a lot of energy and no hope. Um, and, and that, I think, is something that we, we have to address really quickly. Of course, conflict, whether you're in a fragile country that's about to go into it, whether you're in it, or you're coming out of it and sliding back in again, because all of those investments that need to be made in a joined-up approach to development really hasn't happened. Uh, certainly the backslide, in, in some cases, with the rights agenda, 